He accused the club of trying to force him out, admitted he had no respect for Ten Hag. This is his exit interview, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Surely. The, the bridges are burnt now. But, Jim, if we go back, was it last week or the week before we were talking about this? And I, I this, this is how I saw the, the thing pan out. Ronaldo says he wants to leave. New manager, and the first thing the manager must do is sit down with him in a room and, and f- get his feelings. The two of them came out of that meeting with, with some sort of agreement. Some sort of agreement. Whether it was Ronaldo accepting he wasn't going to play as many games or he got, he got some guarantees from the manager about how much game time he was going to get. This is what I believe. And I'm second guessing. I have no inside info on it. I think Ronaldo was promised stuff by the manager and the manager is not, is not committed to that. And I look back in the last few weeks of what's happened where he's asked after the City and why did you not put Ronaldo on out of respect for Ronaldo? He didn't put him on. Now, a couple of weeks later, with two minutes to go when they're tuning up against the Spurs, he refuses to go on. What, what does he want from Ronaldo in two minutes when they're tuning up? I, I, and I, I, I just think he's messed him around. And I, I believe, and again, I'll have to say this this, is, this, this is only my opinion. No one has told me anything, but... As a manager who managed for twenty years, I'm looking at, I'm looking at the situation. I think it has to be that the manager has not gone through with the promises he made when the, when they met. Well, for him to say that, Jim, that's pretty strong stuff. Oh, it's very no strong respect. stuff. Is he daring Manchester United to rip up his contract? Um, I think it's a rather cynical um, outlook that he's exhibited. Listen, the man's had some very very challenging times over the last six months in his personal life. And we know what those circumstances are with the loss of a child. And no one can put themselves in that position and understand how a man's mindset may, may, may well be thinking. Um, but this interview, timed at this particular time, dropping just before he disappears out to the World Cup, is structured in a certain way to create the maximum amount of impact, do the maximum amount of damage. And, of course, Piers Morgan will be all ears for it and leading him into certain conversations and certain questions. And yeah, I think there's some interesting segues where he doesn't really want to make certain observations but he's being led there by peers and that's what journalists do I always felt this was a marriage made in hell you've got a fading superstar coming into an environment that was in disarray with a manager that wasn't capable with a board all over the place and a narrative of ownership that was based upon no investment no outlook of, of representing the club in the best way and a club that wasn't able to keep pace with those that were moving forward Man City being the primary case in points but other football clubs that are getting better and stronger and leaving Man United in their wake like they once did in the 1970s everything happens United are not in that situation anymore they can dictate the pace so I always felt this was going to be a problem at some particular points now I don't like people that make accusations and don't turn around and say who they're talking about you know he's made his ladies claims at, at Ten Hag and I'm in a different camp to Graham and I'm not because I'm trying to be uh, you know a contrarian but I think it's an exercise in futility what you get with Ronaldo is you know this fella's got an opinion, you know that you're handling someone's difficult, so what's the point of spinning him a yarn in the summer, knowing that all you're doing is kicking the can down the road to have the problem two or three months later? So if he spun him a yarn and told him that you're going to do this and you're going to do that and then completely done the opposite, all he was doing was delaying the inevitable and in fact making the circumstances worse because he's proved himself to be someone you can't have a relationship with. So all of that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I, I look at what he's saying and it's, an, it's a narrative that people will latch on to. They'll say that the investment in the facilities behind the scenes hasn't been good enough they'll say that the technology I don't know what technology you need in the kitchen but that's maybe just <laughs> lost kitchen. in translation but the most people though but all, all of that will 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 land in a situation where people will identify that United fans will give him a pass because they say well that's all he wants is the best for the football club and all he's talking about is the fact they're so far behind the uh the, the involvement of other football clubs but I look at it and say Manchester United why would they why would nobody have wanted him in the first place? Who didn't want him? The Edward wouldn't want him. Richard Arnold didn't want him. Who are the executives that he's talking about? Who is it that didn't want him? He uses Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. That's one of his mates in a conversation. The Man United should never have employed Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. That's the most embarrassing dynamic because for three years that football club sat there with no evolution, players running around performing at a level that was far beneath the level of acceptance that you would expect from a Man United team that even Louis van Gaal and Jose Mourinho produced. And all of that brought, brought into a culture where, where, where Ronaldo comes in with this, you know, sort of expectation of what he's entitled to. Yes, I get it. We all know that there is very little doubt. In my view, he's the best footballer that's ever played football. Yeah. But he's still at Manchester United getting paid but 500 grand a week. He's doing exactly. nobody a favour by being there. Yeah. And this is an appalling interview. And if Man United wanted to get rid of him, as he suggests... 
when perhaps really the real initiative was that he wanted to leave. I think, I hope that when we see the full length of the interview, we don't have this mega Markle effect where Oprah Winfrey didn't question a single thing that she says. I do hope that Piers Morgan pushes back and starts to get some detail about what these awful scenarios are that he experienced. I think you can bet your life that he's done that. I hope so. I mean, you say, Sam, and United fans will give him a pass. Will they? Well, to some extent, no, they'll relate, I mean, not any longer. they'll relate to some of the things he says because the narrative is, is the Glazers, well, they've had this argument, the roof's falling in, there's water coming down on people's head, that's why the players are crap, right? The training ground isn't <laughs> sufficient or fit for purpose yeah. and the Glazers haven't dealt with it, so that will appeal to them. Yeah. But I think the hardened Man United fans will see this as for what it is. If you, He said he was going to do this in August. My, my truth, uh, insofar, yeah, it's your truth, insofar as it's relevant and important... Tra- tragically for Ronaldo, the team is getting stronger, the manager's getting influence, more influence, the, 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 the performances are getting better, and he's not really that much part of it. So I would like to see him drop kicked out of the club. I, I don't think there's any necessity to have him there anymore. I think it's an exercise in a uh, race to the bottom. Why would you need this? Why would you want it? Um, and and uh, and the flip side of that is you're allowing him to get precisely what he wants in the first place. Well, the but that is the lesser of two evils, isn't side. it? Graham, um, in recent times you strongly defended Cristiano Ronaldo. Surely you can no longer defend him after this. I certainly do. I come back to it as a meeting. Two people speak. Two people leave the room with an understanding. Um, and someone has not kept their word. But what about his conduct here? And he this feel- is an unauthorised interview. He feels... He feels... It's time for him. He's never spoken. He feels it's time for him to come out and tell his side of the story. This is a player who refused to come on just a few weeks ago. Yeah, this is a player who's arguably, in many people's eyes, the greatest player that's ever kicked a ball. Does that matter now? Yes, it certainly does. It certainly does. So he feels he's been mistreated. Can I give you a little little story about my own circumstances? I was at Liverpool um, and I'd been out with an injury for 10 weeks. Bob Paisley had been out for the same 10 weeks with pleurisy. So I declared myself fit on the Thursday. I think we were playing Wolves at home. Joe Fagan said, um, I said to him, I said, look, I'm, I'm fit. I don't expect to come straight back in the team. They'd won 10 straight games without me. So I said, look, I don't expect to come straight back in. But he said, oh, no, when you're fit, you'll be playing. Given it's Wolves at home, don't play this weekend, but we've got Tottenham on Tuesday. So I said, OK. So on the Monday, we're travelling down. All the guys are asking me, are you going to play? I said, you know, he's told me I'm playing, yeah. We train on a Tuesday morning. I'm in the room with Kenny Dalglish, I get a knock on the door, and I don't know, a sixth sense told me, I bet this is, a, this is Joe going to say he's not going to play me. I just maybe picked on something or picked up something in the train. So it was him, and he said, look, we've changed our mind, we can't change the team. So I, I didn't let him into the room. I said, well, you know what you can do, your team, you can stick your team where the sun doesn't shine, not those words. I wrote out a transfer request, and I can tell you what I wrote there and then. Due to circumstances, I feel it necessary to to ask for a request of transfer. Please treat this as a formal request and please treat it immediately. I go downstairs, I'm sitting in the bar. It was a coincidence that Joe, that the manager had declared himself fit from pleurisy at the same time. So he hadn't travelled with us. So he was coming down with, with his with his mate. Um, and I'm sitting in the bar, I'm on my second gin and tonic at this time. And he walks in, he glances over and he sees me and he comes over and he said, what's going on? I said, well, you need to ask your... Your mate in there, he's told me I'm not playing. And he told me on Thursday I was going to play, or told me Friday I was going to play. Um, oh, we'll see about that. So he's, he went into the dining room where the players were, having their lunch pre-match. Um, came back out, five minutes, you're playing. I said, um, boss, I've, this is my second gin and tonic. How about if I'm just sub? So the, the, the point I'm making is, if someone makes a promise to you, Maybe you're a big player. Someone makes a promise to you. They have to stick to that. And I believe this time round that the player's in the right. I go back to the circumstances. Did you ever go back in any promise you made when you were a manager? Yeah, I'm sure I did. Well I'm then, sure I did. Well then there sure you go. I, I wasn't dealing with it. It was different circumstances. I'm thinking one in particular, but it was circumstances that, that, that just I was forced on to make a change of mind. But I think with him... I think with him, he has been told a story and the manager's not kept it. Then you look post what's happened after this agree- this so-called agreement that it doesn't bring him on against City. And he's, the manager's asked, oh, out of respect. A couple of weeks later, he's, he's wanting him to go on with two minutes to go against Tottenham when the game's won. What, what, what can Ronaldo do there? And then he makes him captain. And I, for me, looking at it from outside, from both sides, I've been a player, I've been a manager, I think the player... 
as a grievance, and I think he's entitled to hear his, his grievance. Do you, do you think is Graham trying to defend the indefensible here, Simon? Um, I think Graham's example isn't a great one. Um, I understand why he might think it is, but I think every now and again situations dictate that people can't always follow through and can't always give you precisely what you want. And you judge people in a diversity. You don't judge them when everything's going your way. So if 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 Graham thinks that the example that he's given of somebody having to change their mind for very tangible reasons. Is, a, is, a, is an example to suggest that he was entitled to put a transfer request in. I would say I'd have been very disappointed with you if I'd have been the owner of Liverpool Football well, Club at that time. you can be as disappointed as you want, Simon. Yeah. I, I was a player with a big ego. And that's fine. And that, and that, and that, was, and that, that was how I treated and, the situation. And that's, and that's, and that's how Ronaldo And that's great, Graham. It doesn't make it right, though, does it? It doesn't make it right. It doesn't well, make I tell you, if you're right. asking me, if I was a player today, if it had happened a month later, two months later, that would have been the exact same reaction from but me. you're a player. So you have to understand... You're a player. You have, yeah. Players have to do as they're told. You, and then, I, since then, I became a manager. And I, and if I might, if a player had done that, if a player had done that to me, I would understand it. I mean, he, he is a Ronaldo is a big player. Yeah, you'd understand but, it, but you wouldn't. But okay, I get you'd understand so, it because you're, you're you're doing is you're taking the literal scenario of someone saying something to you, taking it as a promise because it suits your argument, and then no, throwing your toys no, out of the pram. And the reality argument? of it is, is rather than say, right, I tell you what, what you mean I'm going I'm, I'm to conduct, I'm your, your argument is, is you, that you're overcooking of the pudding. I didn't get what I want, or what I thought I was entitled to, because someone had said no, something, they changed, not the, not the not person with the ultimate authority. To, not not the, entitled to, I believed what the assistant manager told me yeah, at that time. But Graham, also, what your reaction was, is to go from one extreme to the other. So what you've That's had not, is a situation where you've overreacted, you've gone, right, I tell you what I'm going to do, I'm not just going to be unhappy about this and let them know I'm happy about it. I'm going to I'm going to set it all up on fire. I'm going to say I'm leaving. I mean, what a childish outburst! And now we're talking about me or Ronaldo. No, I'm talking about you. Well, and I then didn't you move announce it you... to the world, did I? Hmm? I didn't announce it to the world. I went. You, in the con- I said it to the manager and I handed them a, a transfer request. Were you serious by, by, about the transfer by, by, defini- right by, by definition, a transfer request will find its way into the media, and everyone will it, know about it, it sooner rather than later. It didn't. So okay? I didn't announce because, it to the well, world because Bob Paisley came in and rectified it. To you, guess who's satisfaction? To your satisfaction, of course, and you're I, a cog I, in the wheel. I've you're been a bloody treated player. Badly. You're I've not the head tre- cook and bottle washer. I've been treated badly. In a moment in time, somebody made a judgment call that they had to reverse out of for very tangible I, reasons, which you, as a grown up, which, can understand, right? Because you didn't even expect it, did you? Given now, you were an owner for ten years, I thought you would have an understanding how how. No, I have an understanding. Mechanics work. I have a, a fundamental understanding that you players I get too too far ahead of yourself now, sometimes. Don't generalise, because oh, trust yeah. me, all players are not the same. But that, that there's a dynamic goes on between the player and the manager. It, you cannot sit in front of someone, and make a promise to a player, and then go back on that promise and expect. Graham, I'm, I've got to say to you, there's that. not a lot of sympathy for you I, out I, there. I'm, I'm Gra- not, there's Joe, one of many messages coming in this morning, and I mean a lot of messages from United fans. Graham's chatting absolute nonsense here. If one of his players acted like that when he was managing, he would haul him over the coals. There no, is no excuse for what Ronaldo has Jim, done here. Jim, I come back to now. I, I, I'm second guessing her. There was promises made to Ronaldo, and the manager's not kept them. That's how I see it. That's a simple fact. Now, everybody's an individual. Some people, I don't think any big player would accept a manager reneging on what he's promised them. All big players have big egos, and I think Ronaldo may have the biggest one we've seen for a long, long time. In the twilight he, of his career. Yeah, but yeah, with the exit that, door that, looming. That ego will be there. Forever. Is that maybe why so he's behaving be like this? So it should be with him. United fans not having it, Graham. They're not having it. They want Jim, to look at this Jim. boy. Well, we're talking about Ronaldo. We're talking about Man United in the in the larger picture. Well, they want to look none at this lad, like Alejandro Garnacho, and say of, that's not our a future. Man United supporter will ever agree with anything I say because I think I'm anti-United, which is tosh. In this case, I am. I I choose to. I choose to believe. Although we don't know the true story, I choose to believe that Ronaldo's been mistreated here. End of. That's my that's my take on it. Mistreated. Yeah, I th- I think someone's told them a tale and not kept kept a word. But it may, but I I just I can't understand why that makes any sense to you, because what it, would be the benefits? No, but Graham, listen for a second. What would be the benefits of Ten Hag saying something to Ronaldo? that he patently has no intention of delivering, burning whatever limited bridge he may have had with a player that clearly wanted to leave United anyway, by spinning him... What would be the purpose of that? All you're doing is moving the problem from the conversation that you allude that because, he has in the summer, because, well, that's which I don't exactly think he what, That's exactly what I think he's done. He's but, caused himself a problem. But, 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 so the man's a simpleton. He, he looks at the world's greatest player, knows he has massive influence, knows there's a problem there, and compounds the problem by telling him things that he doesn't intend to do 
so that the problem gets even worse. So now you have a situation that's twice the problem that it could have been in the summer. What yeah, would that's be the logic? exactly. That's, but, but sometimes not, as you know, as you've been part of. Logic doesn't always apply in the world of professional but common football. common sense surely does. But sometimes that, there's not a lot of that around either. I believe, simple, simple, you can, we can talk about this all day. My, I'm choosing, because of my experience in football, both as a player and manager and, and the experiences I've had in both those jobs, is that they had an agreement and the manager's not kept that agreement. And that is why it's non-stop talk about Ronaldo. That has pushed him to this point. And I have to believe that he will leave now. I think his bridges are well and truly burnt now. This is a simple case where someone has promised a player, a big player, the biggest player, something and not come through with it. And that's the reaction you're getting from the player. Simple as that. But, but uh, again, I go back no... to the point. I mean, and Ten Hag is not fit to manage Manchester United by that logic because the problem he's going to have with the amount of situ- circumstances that, that, that Ronaldo will create, all the headlines for the last three months have been about bloody but, Ronaldo but, right? but, and not Manchester United. They've made the mistake. But it's not, not a mistake. It's, it's, an, it's absolutely... It's, 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 Man United... Supporters want us to be talking about the digging out a result yesterday at Fulham. They but want to be talking Hag- about how things have improved at the football Correct, but club. Ten Hag made All f- we're talking about is Ronaldo. But that's that's but, the but that's but, the media, but that, Graham, that, and that's how it works, right? That, they have shot themselves in the foot with but, this. But Graham, that's the media, and that's how it works, right? So let's follow your logic through. Insofar there is any in this conversation, you've got Ten Hag comes out in a press conference, and the first person was and talks about wanting Ronaldo. So he wants him. And the backdrop is that Ronaldo wants to leave and perhaps there's a discussion. If Ten Hag walks through the door and says to the Man United board, I don't think he's, we should get rid of him. It's a different discussion. He wants to keep him. Makes it public. Has a conversation with him. Tells him a pack of lies no. so that he can burn the relationship within three months down the road tell, and then creates an you, absolute... You, uh, Simon, you're you know, forever going down the road ...nuclear using, bomb moment. You know, dramatic sense. He tells him a pack of lies. If he's... If it's one lie, one small lie, that might be enough to push Ronaldo over the edge. Uh, oh, it's right. not a pack of lies. Don't exaggerate. Right, a pack okay. of lies. So, so he, sat, he sat in a room with them, and they have come out of that room with an agreement in place. So he's that told, agreement he's told would things. have been based around how many, how much game time Ronaldo was getting. Well, but Graham, nobody's bigger than the club. Oh, listen, so I'm, is Ronaldo you, bigger you than the club here? Pinky and Perky. I'm more than happy no, to but talk because, because about the next but you can, two and a half hours about Ronaldo. But that's fine. Ronaldo has been told the tale. We're not going to be doing that. Ronaldo has been told the tale. I just understand how you can Ronaldo see has been told the tale. See what? I'm looking at the messages. No, 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 no. I'm not interested. With all due respect, I'm not interested in what, what people are phoning in and saying about this Ronaldo Why? situation. They're the light so, blood of it. Because, Jake, James Harrison, opinion. United fan. Ronaldo's the past, 10 hags of future. Simple. No players bigger than the club. I'll come back to it in five years' time. No one will remember Ten Hag. In, in 55 years' time, yeah, I'm still talking about We'll all remember Ronaldo for the good he's done, that's a great, but now he seriously that's a great blemished it. So, so we've, now, we've now moved into the territory, right, where it isn't a particularly significant thing that um, Ten Hag said to him. It's just not entirely keeping no, with no, every single dot nine T. So now you're going to suggest that Ronaldo's got a justification for this behaviour. What it isn't is what you suggested, a pack of lies. But 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 this, Graham, people you can say narrow things. it down. You can narrow this down quite simply to, I want to play more than more than you want me to play. There's been some sort of discussion, some sort of agreement around that. They walked out the room. Ronaldo's he, happy to but stay. He's gone past the, that. Ma- the manager's happy to keep him. Look at the manager's but actions. He's gone past with it. His he's gone. Okay, Graham, but look he's at, gone past that. He's, no, don't. But, okay, Graham. But, but, look at the but manager. Ronaldo's alleged, Graham. Because you've never been from the get go. Didn't want him in the door. Hang on. You, you had eight managers in ten years. Yep. Well, you had five jobs in five years. We can get going around this circle, right? Well, I managed right. for twenty years and okay. I had eight jobs. Which I'm not sure where you're getting your arithmetic. You, 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 from your your profile. Well, again, you are. You have too much reliance on what you read in Wikipedia. Okay, you've said that. And we should do a show when you take we take our phones away and see how interesting our show. Is. <laughs> okay, oh, where you go so, then? So, so what? Start with it then. This isn't this isn't a pack of lies. This is about Ronaldo having game time. About Ronaldo being on the pitch. He still thinks he's got something to offer. The manager obviously thinks he has something to offer because he persuaded him to stay. I come back to it. They've left the room with an agreement in place and. And obviously now the manager has not kept but that, his word. The, but that doesn't justify a, an unauthorised interview with Piers Morgan, which he apparently it, initiated. Unauthorised? Of course it is. So, well, do you so, think United allowed so, him to do it? Well, why can't he do it on his own? Well, it'd be in his contract. He He's can't under speak, contract yes, probably to not to. speak to anybody. He's what? He can't speak well, to anybody. He cannot bring the club to. into disrepute. Uh, you know that. You've had well, players under contract. a different thing, but it's not an unauthorised... Of course, of course it's an unauthorised interview. Well, how can I you disagree with it? You're just being argumentative you now. 
How can you disagree with something? You're a contract. You know, Graham, you know contracts the same as I do. A You've got the hump because Piers Morgan got the scoop. <laughs> How would I care less? <laughs> but Graham, moments ago, we talked about the Bellamy situation. So you went to Freddie Shepherd at the top of the house at Newcastle then, and the two of you agreed Bellamy should go. Yeah. So when Tag meets Richard, when Ten Hag meets Richard Arnold, as he will, should we be surprised that Ronaldo's kicked out? By your logic, no. To be surprised. Yeah. No, I've just said Jimmy's burnt his bridges. Right. There's no coming back from this. So he's caused his own downfall here. Yeah. He, he's he's unhappy. caused his he, own he, downfall. He sees <laughs> he sees a situation where it ain't gonna improve for me and I'm gonna speak my mind. So, and I think that's, but it's I not his downfall, Jim. It's what he wants. And 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 the conversation that Graham alludes to, he played a lot of game time last year. Ronaldo made it clear that he wanted to leave before Ten Hag was even in the seat. Because the team wasn't where he wanted to be. He did nothing but complain and gesticulate last year. And I'm in the camp that, that players of genius are given a certain amount of latitude. But Graham seems to be in the camp that because he wasn't given something by an assistant manager, he can put in a transfer request and set it on fire. Ronaldo can do the same. And that we should somehow find the fact that no one's able to change. Nothing. moment you've said something, nothing will ever change. And if you change something, because circumstances are different, then you've broken a promise to a player or to a, a leading person in the dressing room. And subsequently, as a result of that, all bets are off and they should be able to do what they want. Okay. That can't be right. Want to hear from United right. fans in oh, this? Wikipedia because, or no Wikipedia? Where do, that you, can't be right. where do you stand this morning? Team United or Team Ronaldo? 03717-22334-81089. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.